Hi, I'm Matt Hayes and I'm here to talk to you about the Matt Hayes Adventure range of predator fishing kit which is made by Fladden. And in the range you'll find rods, reels, lures and braided lines. So just dealing with the rods first of all, there are basically two ranges. We've got the Inca, which stands for Indestructible Carbon Action. And we'll come on to that in a moment. And we've also got Shaman which is a little bit more expensive than Inca, a little bit more pro-grade with a higher grade of carbon and fittings, as you'll see in a moment. Now, in both ranges, you've got a choice of sizes. So if you look at Inca first, you'll see that we've got a nice black carbon blank with an EVA handle, a winch style reel seat. And as you can see from this rod here, this is what you need to look out for. This one is 210 centimeters long, which is seven feet. And we've also got different actions. So basically this is what I would call a light to medium spinning rod. This one here, which is called big spin, again, it's an Inca rod, similar fittings, but this time more powerful. And this one is designed for large spoons and bigger plugs. And we'll come on to some of that in a moment. In the Shaman range, we've basically got a very similar deal. So if we look at the lighter of the two shaman rods, you'll see that basically this one's actually got a gram rating on it. This one is rated at 10 to 40 grams. It's a very, very good all round gram rating for a spinning general lure fishing rod. So with a rod like this, you can fish with plugs, spoons, spinners, and of course, soft baits, which are very popular today. For those of you who are fishing purely for pike and using bigger lures, then there's a beefed up model in the Shaman range, which is this one here. This one is rated at 15 to 50 grams. It doesn't seem like much of an increase, does it? But actually, it makes quite a difference. And you'll find this is a more powerful, beefy rod that's basically designed for casting larger plugs, spoons, and some of the heavier, soft plastics. What we're going to do now is to take you on a little whistle stop range of some of the lures that we make by actually fishing with them and showing you how to retrieve them. Well, you'll notice that I'm rigging this rod up using braided line, which is available in the collection. And the advantage of using braided line is that it's got virtually zero stretch. So for lure fishing, where you want to be in contact with the lure at all times, as closely as possible, the zero stretching braid makes it a really, really good choice. And the nice thing about lure fishing is that you don't need to carry much kit. These rods are actually very versatile. So they'll cope with a very wide latitude of lure types and sizes. And all you need to do, having filled up your reel with braided line, is basically attach a wire spinning trace, which you can either make yourself or, as in this particular case, this is one that's been purchased from a, a local tackle shop. If you don't have time or you don't know how to make them, it's fairly straightforward, but this is really easy. <laughs> now, the sort of reel that you want, I would recommend that you have a medium size fixed ball reel. This is a Matt Hayes Adventure FD40. FD stands for front drag. For spin fishing and predators in general, front drag is better because it always gives you a more controlled release of the line. If you undo the drag and set it correctly before you start fishing so that it, it will slip under the pressure of a good sized fish, then you haven't got any risk of losing fish. Now in the collection, you'll find that there's a top 20 plugs that have all been pre-selected. I've chosen this one, which is quite a large plug. I like it because it's got very natural bait fish type colours and the river's quite low and clear today. So I think this would be a good choice. But in the collection, you'll find lures of different sizes. Some are jointed, some are straight bodied, some are bright colours, some are natural colours. So there's something really for everyone there. And there are lures that will catch pike, perch and zander. But I'm going to give it a go with this particular plug. now. I've already attached the wire trace to my braided line and at the end of it there's just a little link clip here so I'm going to attach the plug. It's a very very simple setup. The beauty with plugs is that basically they almost fish for themselves. You impart the action by simply retrieving and it makes the plug wiggle. 
So I'm just going to cast this one out, out it goes. And the way to fish a plug is just to basically retrieve it steadily, sometimes varying the rate of the retrieve can be really good, just speed up a little bit and then maybe slow down, stop the plug and then crank it again. And what you'll find is that some uh, plugs naturally float, some plugs naturally sink. And if you stop retrieving just for a second, a floating plug will start to drift up to the surface. But as soon as you start winding again, it starts to dive. A sinking plug will begin to sink slowly, but as soon as you retrieve it, it will start to rise in the water and sometimes that sudden change of depth with the plug can make a really big difference and it can spur a predatory fish into striking. Well, this is a lovely collection of three spinners. Spinners are actually really popular. They're the lures that most people start fishing with because they are so easy to fish with. You just cast them out and wind them in very steadily and the blade here revolves around this area in the center which gives it the casting weight, the barrel and the blade spins like that and it gives the illusion of a bait fish in the water. So they're really, really simple. They catch loads of fish. I've chosen this silver one today, but there's some brighter colored ones in that packet, including one that's called Fire Tiger, which I really like too, but it doesn't matter which one we choose. It's really just for demonstration purposes. So attach the spinner to the line in the same way. And with a spinner, it's really simply a question of exploring the water. Try to cast into different areas of the lake or the river. In running water, you'll find that the current will help to turn the blade on the spinner. So it's very, very useful to be able to retrieve quite slowly. Otherwise, you'll be bringing it back too fast. But in lakes, of course, you'll need to retrieve a little bit more quickly, particularly if they're shallow. And that's the thing really with all lures, you need to understand and develop an understanding particularly of which depths they work at best and, and how to work them at those depths. For example, on a deep lake, it can be a good idea to allow the lure to sink for quite a long time and then retrieve really steadily so that the lure isn't fishing too high in the water column. But on a shallow lake where there's lots of weed, then retrieving quite quickly and keeping the lure well up out of the weed is obviously a big advantage. But on a river like this one, a very steady retrieve with the spinner is all that you need. And this is the final piece of the lure fishing jigsaw, soft plastics. They seem to be taking over the world at the moment. This is a really nice collection actually. If you look at these jigs here, the hooks are really strong, but they're not too thick in the wire. And you've got a nice collection here of soft tailed grubs. These are really, really good action in the water, even when you work them very, very slowly. I've taken one out of the packet and I've chosen quite a bright one. The main point is I just need to show you how to put the jig and the grub together. Start off by taking the point of the hook, push it into the grub and bring it out through the side like so. Just feed the grub along the shank of the hook like this and push it down until basically it emerges from the grub's body. Well the way to fish jigs and soft plastics varies actually and it's developing all the time. At a very simple level if you did nothing more than wind this slowly in you'd have quite a lot of success because this tail would be beating away, the hook would ride point up so it's not digging down into the bottom and you probably catch a lot of predators that way but you can impart more action by jigging it and that's where the name or term jig to describe this type of lure comes from so let's just show you now the two different types of retrieve casting out first of all straight retrieve let the lure sink to the bottom and then start slowly retrieving but you can stop and that will allow the jig to start to dive, maybe go straight back down to the bottom again. So by retrieving slowly and stopping, retrieving and stopping, basically you'll be bringing the jig back like this. And that's a very, very attractive motion. There is another way to do it. And again, it involves allowing the jig to sink to the bottom, 
which we'll do now. And this time I'm going to cast out, let it sink, and I'm going to retrieve the jig with small lifts. So basically what I'm going to do, you can see my thumbs here facing forward, I'm going to lift the rod and retrieve immediately. Just a small amount of line, only the amount of line that I've lifted, like this, lift, wind, lift, wind, pause, lift, wind, lift, wind. It's only one turn of the reel handle, but that's enough to recover the slack line that I've dragged back. And the effect of that is very, very pronounced on the jig because it will climb and fall and it will literally clonk along the bottom, hopping like this. And for deep lying fish, particularly in cold conditions, perch, zander and pike, it's a very, very effective way of targeting them. So that's the Matt Hayes Predator Collection. <laughs>